Okay, now I hope you've begun construction. There are some, um, some really niggly detailed things that are not going to make sense just yet, but I'm going to point them out to you right now just so we've got consistency for when we come back and they do make sense. I've got a vertical scale which is going to give me cumulative frequency. So I'm going to put the numbers on there right now. You can see I said I was going to start from zero and then I'm going to count up all the way so I can make sure I at least get to 64. So I've topped out at 70 just so that I can keep numbers round. Okay? Now on the bottom here, please pay close attention to this because I'm going to admit right out the gate it's weird and it's going to feel quite strange and arbitrary. Okay? Can you just keep your pen in your hand, even keep it on the page, but just eye up and have a look at my horizontal axis. Have a look at my markings. Do you notice there's something kind of weird about them, right? I have started the vertical axis at zero and then I've just gone up. Zero, in fact I'm going to write zero there, and it goes up. Okay? But the horizontal axis does something a bit weird. Okay? I'm not interested in values outside of these. I'm not interested in values outside of these. So I'm going to start at 30, but there's this weird little gap here. It's a half column width. In fact, that's so important, I'm going to put a little separate marker there for you. Maybe you want to as well, because the things you think about are the things you remember. That half column width, I know it seems, like I said, sort of weird and arbitrary, but it ends up being surprisingly important. There's a reason it's there. There's a reason we don't just jam this up against the axis. There's a reason we don't make it a full column. We will return to that idea a bit later on. For now, I just want you to register. There's a half column width there. Uh, for my, on my board, it's five centimeters. And then everything else, I've got full columns going up according to my classes, which in this case is tens. Um, but, you know, there's nothing stopping your classes being other sizes depending on what data you are dealing with, okay? Alright, now, most of you, um, unlike me, have a grid on your page, which will make hopefully this part that I'm about to do much, much easier. Um, but what we all want to get across here is, each of these cumulative frequencies I'm going to match with a class and then up the scale. Um, I pro should probably, and so should you, mark in what our axes are now that we know what they are. Here's cumulative frequency, and then over here are our scores. So, you know, scores are customarily called x, right? I'm going to begin with the first class, 30 to 39. I need to go up to 3, right? Handy for me, this is 10 centimeters, so I'm just going to go up 3 centimeters. You might be 3 millimeters, whatever is the appropriate scale. But the scale actually does matter. So please measure that. Use your grid, all that kind of thing. Uh, uh, let's see, where am I going to put this? Ah, that's a great question. So this goes 30 to 39, and then it suddenly jumps to 40, right? Um, we have a name for this kind of quantitative data, by the way. There's two kinds of quantitative data. Which one is this one? Like, it gives you a bit of a clue. It's discrete. We're not having any like 39.1 or even 39 and a half. Um, I guess this is the way the HSC does it, right? So I'm just treating this as the 30 to 39 category. As soon as you hit 40, it's a, it's a new thing, okay? All right, so there's my three. I'm going to mark that across. Um, I can put a vertical line here at the left. I'm not going to put, this is just a very minor practical detail, I'm not going to put a vertical line on the right because it's about to be useless. The next class over has a cumulative frequency of what? Have a look. You wrote it down too. It's 9, right? So just like before, I'm going to take this horizontal line and I'm going to draw it up at 9 for the next class over. Now I've just got to eye this properly, so just bear with me. Okay, so there's my vertical line for the next class over. And you can see why I didn't bother doing this vertical line here, because I'm just about to do one straight over the top, right? Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to go like so, and I'm just going to keep on going all the way through. Can I ask you to do that? Take great care in your measurement and your scale, and then when you're finished, maybe just wave so I know where you're up to, um, but it'll take me a second to finish as well. So go ahead and do that. Now, it's okay if you're not finished. I'll let you quietly continue. Um, so, so this is what we're getting to. We've got our cumulative frequencies here. Um, it's it's such a small thing, but it's worth pointing out, Mrs. Lee's had a bit of a conversation here, which I'm going to share with all of you. This looks like it's a chart that has bars on it. 
So it might be tempting to call it a bar chart. It's not though, it's not because Number one, uh, what we're putting onto here are classes, and you see there are, no, there are no gaps between them, right? There are no gaps. And that's to indicate there's, there's sort of this string of people all sort of adding up together. So we've got different kinds of data here. That's why we represent them in different ways. Now, this part's also important. Some of you actually have already had a go at this question before. Um, you graphed it, um, and you have a graph that looks very similar to this with some subtle differences. So for example, have a look at my horizontal values here. Right, what are they? Where did I get these numbers from? I got them from the classes. Importantly, they are the boundaries of the classes. Does that make sense? Now, this is not the only way that you can take this data and graph it. This is not the only way. You could take this column that I said that I ignored later. I'm coming back to you now. You could take these class centers here. What is the class center, 30 to 39, by the way? 34 and a half, very good. 34 and a half, 44 and a half, and so on, okay? Um, you could make those your uh, markings, and then your, well, your blocks here would go over the middle of those, right, rather than on the edge. But the reason I have not done it like that in this case is because of what we're about to do. What we're about to do can only be done when you graph your classes like this, not when you use your class centers. Anyone who has done it with their class centers, just have a look at what we're about to do. Just try it with your other one and you'll see it doesn't work out. And this is why we care about where you put the half column and all that. To do this ogive, take a new color if you've got one. And very simply, all we need to do is join the bottom left and the top right corner of each of these bars as they go up. Bottom left, top right. It's easy at the, the first one. Here's the bottom left, use your ruler again, and go up to the top right. So you're going to get that. That's the first line in your polygon. I've just ruined my 40, I'll fix that in a second. Okay. The polygon, the ogive, is going to continue from the bottom left up to the top right. So I'm going to go up to the top here. Top right of each new bar. Okay, yeah, makes sense? Okay. Okay, aha, very good. You're already five steps ahead of me. So I'm going to continue this until I get to the very top. And once I'm done, you can see why it's called a polygon, by the way. Um, once we're done, we will have what's called the ogive. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> now, what we've got here, uh, it tops out at 64, by the way, okay? What we've got here, we can use to answer this question we had earlier about the median. And in fact, not only can we use it to answer it, we can do better than before. If we wanted the, the, the median off of this, right? You could get the median class, but you couldn't get the median as a score. It's the same thing with the mode, okay? But we can come up with a median now that we have our ogive. That's why these things are useful. We know it's supposed to come in at what position? 32 and a half, between 32 and 33. Well, you can find that on your vertical scale, right? 32 and a half, uh, this is the color I'll use. No, take it back, this is the color I'll use. Find 32 and a half. That's 35, so that must be 32 and a half. Okay. And then we can draw across to where it meets the ogi, where it meets the cumulative frequency polygon. Go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do it with my ruler because I don't trust myself. Don't eyeball this. Do it precisely. You'll see why in a second. Okay. Now this is important for two reasons. Number one, let's have a look at where this position 32 and a half comes to meet the bar graph. Okay. This answers our previous question when we were umming and ahhing over which class the median would appear in. Okay. Thanks. Uh, have a look. It meets in this 60 to 69 class, which most of you did say before, but some of you are coming umming and ahhing over this, right? It should make sense because positions are from the bottom. One, two, and three are here. Then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are here. Then 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 21 are here. You wanted to count up to 32 and 33, which is clearly in the next one, okay? But we can go better than this. Get your ruler again. Don't just draw across. Now draw vertically, draw down and you get better than a class. You actually get a median value down here that you can read off the graph. This is why your precision was so important, okay? So go ahead again, use your ruler like we did before. Okay. 
60 what? What are you getting for your median? 67? 68? 67, 68, at this scale, it's, you know, you've got millimeters, right? So it's hard, but... Um, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm really glad, number one, we're getting consistency. Number two, that your consistency agrees with me because I don't have grid paper here, so I'm quietly proud of myself that my measurements are acting up. So we can say here, and I'd love you to um, mark this in, okay? Our median, not just our median class, but our median, we can read off of our ergive, I'm going to call it at 68. Okay, 68. Okay, now if you use your class centers and if that line that you drew connecting things ended up falling outside of the bars, that's what happens to you if you join up those centers, what you'll get is quite a different value. So watch out for that. You get, it's, it's kind of sneaky. Uh, Didi, did you have a question? Or you, it just, just like, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so. I'm going to stop there, okay? Anytime you get asked for a cumulative frequency graph and it's in classes. Classes are a bit sneaky and tricky, okay? But this is how to do it.